So let's look at layers. Layers are um, controlled by the Layers Settings dialog, which is available under the Document menu, Layers, Layer Settings here, where there's a shortcut, which would be either Command L on the Mac or Control L on Windows. When I bring open the Layer Settings dialog, there are two halves, the Layer Combinations and the Layers. Layers have to do with categories of elements, categories that you want to show or hide. Now, every element that you place in an ARCHICAD model or an ARCHICAD project in any view has a layer associated with it. The only real exceptions are doors and windows because these are part of the wall. So in other words, if the wall is on an exterior wall layer, the door window is part of that wall and they will be seen if the, that layer is turned on. Now there are some ways to control the visibility of doors and windows using model view options, uh, which I described briefly earlier and we'll return to in a later lesson. But for the most part, all elements have layers associated with them. Now the layers, the naming of the layers can be anything you like. This is just simply text. So I can go ahead and edit this text if I want within this project. It'll only affect the current project. Although if we happen to be working in a template, it would affect projects that are created from that template later on. Now the text can be um, uh, rather lengthy. You can see some of these names getting fairly long and so it can be explanatory or it can follow certain conventions that uh, are in your particular jurisdiction or your particular client. For example, in the US we have uh, the AIA and National CAD standards um, where we have a first letter for the discipline such as A for architecture or C for civil. Then we have a dash or a hyphen and a four-letter um, category such as wall or F-L-O-R for floor, short version of floor, so it's an abbreviation for certain things like that, and then possibly another dash and um, a subcategory such as E-X-T-R for exterior or I-N-T uh, or I-N-T-R for interior. So the layers can meet um, certain uh, standards or they can be as you wish, just something that explains what uh, is on here. For example, this layer that says A floor, fixtures, railings, and lower cabinets. So it's fairly self-explanatory. You know that if you have a railing, it goes on this. And if you have a cabinet and it's on the floor, it'll be placed on this layer. Now you'll notice that some layers are turned off with the eyeball closed. Some layers have the eyeball open, and those elements are going to be visible at this point. Some layers are unlocked and those elements then can be edited and some layers are locked. The icon is red for the lock and those uh, elements on those layers cannot be moved around or edited while that lock is in place. If you uh, look carefully you'll notice that when an, a layer is turned off I've also got it locked and vice versa. By coordinating these carefully I can streamline the layer palette, uh, the layer pop-up menu. I created a video tutorial on this that you can refer to uh, to see how that's done. But basically uh, it generally can be a good idea to uh, make sure that layers that are visible are unlocked and layers that are hidden are locked in order to streamline your workflow. Now the basic principle of um, uh, layers is that since visibility is controlled by layers, we need to have enough layers to control the elements in your project. Ideally, just enough layers that you have the control you need, but not too many. So the basic rule, if elements need to be shown at different times, in other words, of two different elements, one is shown sometimes and the other is hidden, and vice versa, or sometimes both of them are shown, then they need to be on different layers. For example, if you're putting in objects, with the object tool, you know, the tool that has the chair here, well you can be putting in furniture like chairs and you can be putting in cabinets or trees and many other variations of course. Well, 
we're going to be showing furniture only on certain drawings, perhaps a presentation plan. And so we have a layer for furniture, and that's going to be turned on in the furniture plan. But when we're working on, for example, a, a floor plan, like this, the furniture is going to be turned off. On the other hand, the fixtures, such as the cabinets, will be shown. So we do need to have two different layers, one for fixtures and one for furniture, because in this case, fixtures are going to be shown, but the furniture is not. Um, on the other hand, sometimes uh, people have multiple layers that they don't need. In other words, they have too many layers for what is required. Now there's no big issue with that except that as the layer list gets longer and longer it gets more unwieldy and harder to decide what layer to put something on and get hard to, to manage. Here we have a layer for railings and lower cabinets because in general we're going to show them both together or we're going to hide them both. We'll show them of course on floor plans and we'll show them when we do an elevation or a section uh, here, but we may actually, when we're doing something like a site plan, have them both turned off because we'll just have a simplified version of the building with just the stairs, for example, and um, walls and uh, you know certain other uh, identifiers. Uh, so the fixtures and lower cabinets um, uh, and railings can be on one layer. So that's uh, something to think about. If you need to turn certain things off and on at different times, they have to be on different layers. There have to be layers that exist separately for that option. Whereas if different types of elements are always shown together or always hidden together, they can be combined. Now, um, some layers, for example, as I scroll down here, we go to A, Wall, Exterior, well, the exterior walls are so important to your project that they're shown on virtually every layer combination. So you can see the eyeball here is turned on for almost everything. There's a special purpose layer combination we have in this file that's for dimensions only. This is actually used for creating some dimensions um, uh, that are shown on multiple stories that are common to multiple stories. So if you place elements uh, dimension elements on that particular layer and that layer combination, that view, that layer combination can be used for multiple stories and only needs to be updated once to affect multiple stories. But in general, the exterior walls are on pretty much every layer combination. Uh, there are some other specialized ones here for working with detail drawings or layout sheets um, that uh, where it's turned off, but for the most part they're on. On the other hand, things like the roof are shown only on a few layers. They're you know, shown um, on the layers that are relevant. Um, and things like floor slabs are going to uh, similarly be only seen on certain ones. Now, there are some layer combinations that relate to construction documents. So a layer combination has a function. In other words, when I click on Condoc or construction document furniture, that creates a particular set of layers that are turned on or off. Or if I go to floor plan, we'll see different layers that are shown. Um, now on the floor plan, we are going to see all the dimensions because on a construction document floor plan, we're going to see a lot of annotation information. Whereas on a furniture plan, we might have many of those turned off because the furniture plan is more for presentation and communication with the client. So each one of these may be used for different types of drawing output. Now, if we go to something like the electrical plan, it's going to show certain information that's common here, but we've got a layer down below in this system that instead of having a discipline name like M for mechanical, P for plumbing, we have something here that has a U. Now the concept here is something that uh, is not widely used, but I think it's a very powerful and pretty easy to understand concept. There are elements that you're only going to show on the electrical plan. And there are other elements that you might only show on the site plan. And you'll see that there is a layer for we have for the site only. So 
if you're going to be putting something on the electrical plan, well, what would you put on an electrical plan that you wouldn't put on other drawings? Well, there are going to be some electrical elements that are only shown on that drawing. There are going to be perhaps some notes, labels, maybe some dimensions showing where those electrical elements are placed. Um, there could be some other text notes. Um, so there are a number of different types of elements. In other words, if we look at the tools on the left side here, you know, we may be using text and dimensions, and maybe there's some line work and maybe some splines or curved to show where the wiring connections are. And we'll maybe have some objects such as, you know, the receptacles or um, the lights or the switches, uh, things like that. So we've got in this particular file, which is based on master template, one layer for all of those things. This is in contrast to some people's approach, which I think is usable but can be cumbersome, and that is to have a layer for electrical objects, another layer for electrical text, another layer for electrical dimensions, another layer for electrical labels. That's four or five or even six layers that are only going to be seen on the electrical plan, perhaps. So if all of those elements basically are going to be seen at the same time or hidden when you're not using working on the electrical plan, then you could put them all onto one layer. Now there is some justification sometimes if you want to turn off the notes for the electrical but still show the electrical symbols. That's really up to you. You can have more than one layer for these things. But as a simplification and as an aim, I think this is a very important thing to realize is that you can have, for example, one layer for all the elements that are only shown on the ceiling plan. Now, layer combinations are set up by name here. And so if I go to, uh, let's say, the floor plan one, when I click on it, it shows different layers that are turned on and turned off. Now, let's say that for some reason I decide that I want on the floor plan that I want to show partition walls. So for some reason the partition walls are not showing. So that appears to be a mistake in this template. So I will click on this to tell it to turn on. Now if I said OK, what we'll see is that the layers have changed just a little bit and in the quick options here it says custom as opposed to what I had which was floor plan. So the word custom shows up in the quick options in that case. Now let me go open the layer dialog box again, Command L, and we'll see I've reinstated the floor plan and the floor plan still does not have the partition layer. Now I'll click on this to say that I'd like to turn this on and then I'll click update and that then records that the floor plan layer combination has this correct or turned on. And when I say OK, you see I'm still in the floor plan here. And when I open up the layer dialog box, we'll see that the floor plan now has partition layer turned on. So if you activate a layer combination and you decide to change something about the layer visibility, you will need to click the Update button to um, have that effect. So to study whether a layer combination is accurate or it's showing what you need, you simply click on it and you can scroll through the list and see if anything is amiss, anything needs to be turned on or turned off that um, is not on at the moment or is not set that way. Make a change, click Update. On the other hand, if I click on the right side, for example, let's look at the ceiling slab layer, I can say, well, when is that shown? And by clicking on it, you'll see that it's shown in certain layers, certain layer combination. Um, so in elevations, the ceiling slab layer is shown, or foundation dimensioned here in this case, or sections. Um, now I'm not sure whether this, this drawing is set precisely correct. In other words, there may be some things that I need to change um, here. For example, the slab, ceiling slab perhaps should be shown on the reflected ceiling layer combination. So what I'll do is I will click on this 
and tell it to change and to make it unlocked. So you'll notice that the update button is gray and there's no corresponding update button here. So if what um, this points out is that once you've clicked on a particular layer on the right side, you can study which drawings or layer combinations it's turned on or off um, in the current setup. And if you make a change, not by clicking on the name of a layer combination, but by clicking on the visibility um, uh, icons here, then it will instantly take effect. Now, instantly is relative. When I click OK, that will take effect. So I'll say OK. Now, you'll notice that when I clicked OK, it took me back out to the current viewpoint, which was the first floor, but switched me to a different layer combination, which is Condock Reflected Ceiling. Now this quick options palette allows me to switch at any time from one layer combination to another. Here's the furniture plan, which I was on. Now quick options palette, if you don't have that in your environment, in other words, you say, well, where is that? Let me just show you. I can close it here, and I can get it back again by clicking this little icon down in the bottom left of virtually any drawing window. You'll see it has the little prompt or pop-up. This is Quick Options. When I click on it, it'll come back in the same place. It is a separate little palette, so I can actually float it around, perhaps have it close to where I'm working to change my layer combination to uh, you know, something else when I want to. Um, and I can hide it and show it also by clicking on this button here. And it'll always go back to wherever you last had it. I like having it docked underneath the navigator because it fits in nicely. Now, in ARCHICAD 14, we've got, uh, looks like, six different things in the quick options. Um, in uh, earlier versions of ARCHICAD 13, 12, 11, 10, it was fewer. So it might only be four or th even three uh, quick options, maybe back in ARCHICAD 10. But the basic idea is these give a quick way to change some of the settings that are in the view um, and you can maintain this regardless of whether you're in the view map or the project map. You see the quick option still is available. Now, when I double click on a particular view, and let me go to, for example, the floor plan, double click on it, this sets all of the settings as the floor plan. In other words, uh, whatever that particular view is set, it will activate that. Now if I go and manually change it, so for example I change it to um, the furniture plan, we'll see that the properties here have a little warning sign. It says I've got highlighted this particular view, but the properties of that view do not match the current setting in the quick options, or if I've manually changed the layers, then you know, this may say custom, and this warning will show up. So this, these, this little triangle warning is something you don't have to worry about, but just be aware that it indicates that even though a view is highlighted, it's not the one that's active. So in fact, if I double click, it'll put it back to that. But if I highlight anything else, just click here, We'll see, actually, that's interesting. It doesn't show a warning. It shows me the properties of this. When I double click it, it will activate those properties um, and make them take effect. So uh, mainly, I guess, if you have activated a particular view um, and then you make a manual change to it. Uh, so uh, for example, we change this to the uh, reflected ceiling plan then it will give us a warning that we're in a different mode.